So Jesus, the declaration of that wonderful hymn of the church, those wonderful words out of the book of Job, out of the midst of his suffering, I know that my Redeemer lives, and we know that our Redeemer lives on this Sunday after Easter. So thank you, Jesus, for uh, living. Thank you, Jesus, for proclaiming your life into our hearts over and over again. Thank you, Jesus, for giving to us the wonderful gift of your true body and your true blood. May it strengthen us, strengthen us, strengthen us as we keep following you in this world. Cross our hearts, Jesus. Cross our hearts. We ask it in your name. And all who agreed said, amen. You may be seated. So again, as I said, said uh, just continue to sort of celebrate the uh, echoes of Easter as we're here on this uh, uh, Sunday net. So last uh, Sunday at 8 o'clock, uh, 300 uh, plus people were here. And so uh, preparing for Easter, uh, me and a number of other people pre- prepared these little um, uh, bags that you received if you were here last week. Got a little plastic bag. There was a little piece of clay and a little cross and a, a card that had this uh, great hymn verse on. And we talked about this idea of imprinting in our hearts so we had uh, about 300 of those about half of them went out of the 600 and then as I mentioned before at 10 30 462 people showed up so not everyone got the little uh, object lesson um, but uh, we were just uh, overwhelmed and, and thrilled uh, with that and I want to say uh, to those of us who are here this morning uh, especially those that are of our New Hope family thanks for praying Thanks for uh, serving. Uh, again, like I said, we're still just celebrating the, the echoes. Again, for those guests, maybe they were some of you that were guests last Sunday, maybe you uh, guests for the first time, maybe you've been uh, coming for a while. Uh, we're just so happy that uh, we're all, all here in that. Hey, before I get into the uh, uh, main parts of the message today, I just want to make a couple of, uh, you, you, uh, notify you of a couple of things. Uh, this Wednesday, this coming Wednesday, uh, there's going to be another, uh, another study of a, of what's called the Truth Project. It's been out for a number of years and a number of people have been requesting that this be uh, revisited again. So the Truth Project is a, a wonderful, uh, it kind of gives you the whole world view of what, uh, what God is doing in the world, what God continues to do in the world. So it's called the Truth Project. It'll meet Wednesday night uh, at six o'clock and it's gonna go in the um, music room and that's for both men and women. And a week from this coming Thursday, so on Thursday, May 4th, uh, some women are going to gather on Thursday evening here at New Hope, and they're going to go through a study called The Comparison Trap. I'm familiar with it. It's a wonderful, wonderful study. Very, very encouraging to uh, ladies of all ages. Uh, again, we've, got, had, we've had this mon- Monday night men's group, so some of the women of our congregation said, hey, what about us women? And so we're going to get a women's study going on Thursday, uh, May 4th. So again, last week, um, if you were here in that, and if you were fortunate enough, especially if you were at 1030 to get uh, a piece of this uh, a clay in that, we had you hold it in your hand, and the idea was just this modeling clay. It doesn't dry out. It's modeling clay. It's a different kind of clay. It's not like your Play-Doh in that that as you kept holding it in your hand, it would get warmer and warmer. And at, at the end of the message, as you were uh, keeping this clay, getting it warmer and that, we had to take the cross and just imprint it onto, the, to, onto this uh, clay and that, representing our, our hearts. And that's what Jesus wants for us. And so we had this simple forward prayer last week. Jesus, cross my heart. Jesus, cross my heart. And that's a prayer that we will always be praying. It's not just an Easter prayer, not just a Sunday after Easter prayer. It's a daily prayer. It's a prayer that we can be praying over and over and over again. So again, why don't we just uh, practice it and pray it uh, one time together this morning. Let's say these four words, pray these four words together. Jesus, cross my heart. And uh, the whole idea from this uh, came from a hymn verse that does get one of these real, real, real old hymns. It's a hymn verse that I would come across kind of like once a year and that. And I'd read this hymn verse and I'd think about, oh, someday I just got to, um, we've got to live out this hymn verse. We've got to do what the hymn verse is saying to do. It's on the back of your bulletin uh, again today and it's going to come up on the screens. So uh, let's, uh, um, let's, let's pray these words together too. This uh, wonderful uh, hymn verse that says, On my heart, imprint your image, blessed Jesus, King of grace, that life's riches, cares, and pleasures never may your work erase. Let the clear inscription be, Jesus crucified for me is my life, my hope's foundation, and my glory and salvation. 
So again, one of the things that we know is that uh, the, there are forces in this world besides just the force of the cross, and we'll be talking about that, but there's these forces in, in the world that would like to try to erase the imprint the inscription of Jesus crucified for me. Somehow we think that we can uh, live our lives in the ways that we would like to live our lives, how we can choose to live our lives, that we don't need the imprint of this cross. We're making the, trying to make the case that no, we want to live our lives with the imprint of this cross when it's really, really heavy, as we're going to talk about in a moment, and when it's just glorious when it's just glorious but we want that cross to you know that to, to, as we would pray never may your work erase never let this clear inscription uh, uh, be jesus crucified for me is my life it's my hope's foundation my glory and salvation so this morning we would ask this question how's your cross my heart following jesus how's your cross my heart following jesus Again, sometimes it can be difficult to follow Jesus with this cross on our hearts. Last Sunday, we were looking at this wonderful, wonderful story in Luke chapter 24. At some point, late in the afternoon of that first Easter Sunday, late in the afternoon, two of the followers of Jesus were leaving the city of Jerusalem where all the events of Monday, Thursday, and Good Friday had happened where the disciples had stayed on Easter Saturday, not knowing what would happen next. And then when the word started to break on that first Easter Sunday morning, where the women go to the tomb and they don't find a body there, they come back and tell the disciples, the disciples go and they don't find a body there. At some point during those morning hours, Jesus ends up appearing to some of the women when they come another time, he ends up appearing to Simon Peter, that, as we know as Peter. And at some point in the afternoon, maybe let's just say like 5 o'clock, as these disciples were walking, as, we re, re, as the Bible tells us in Luke 24, they were walking from Jerusalem to Emmaus, about seven miles. They start out, and at some point, these two are joined by Jesus. They're unable to recognize Jesus in this wonderful, amazing, glorified, resurrected body. He's able to do that. And he walks with them for two hours. Just walks with them. Gosh, I want to know that kind of Jesus. I want to walk with him. He wants to walk with me. He wants to walk with you. Two hours on a Sunday afternoon, that first day. Didn't just walk with those two disciples. He walks with us. And so here's what we read in Luke 24. We read these words, but I want to read them again. So they drew near to the village to where, to which where they were going, and he acted as if he were going to go further. You know, they've been together for at least two hours. But they urged him strongly, saying, stay with us, stay with us, stay with us. For it's toward evening, toward evening, and the day is now far spent. So he, Jesus, went in to stay with them. And when he was at the table with them, he took the bread and blessed and broke it and he gave it to them. And then it says, and their eyes were open and they recognized him and he vanished from their sight. And then they said these words. Again, it's not just words that apply to them. These are words that can apply to each one of us here. Over and over again, because Jesus comes near and walks with us just as he physically came near and walked with them. Did not our hearts burn within us while he talked to us on the road, while he opened to us the scriptures. Again, we said last week that when they start this seven mile, this two hour walk with Jesus, their hearts are heavy. They know about the events maybe of Monday, Thursday from the disciples that were there. They know about how they went to the garden where Jesus was arrested. They know about Good Friday. So here it is, late Sunday afternoon, and they said, you know, hey, we heard some of these things that happened earlier in this day, but we don't know what to make of it, and so we're going back to our home. But then it says, as they were walking along, Jesus opened to them the, the law and the prophets and the scriptures, and 
made all these connections of how it was. Here's the Old Testament inspired scriptures saying here's what's going to happen to Messiah when he comes and all the things that they said from the Old Testament, the New Testament. Well, they all matched up. They all matched up. And by the time they get to the time when they regulate, did not our hearts burn within us while he talked to us on the road, while he opened to us the scriptures? So again, this question, how's your cross my heart following Jesus? We watch these two followers, heavy, heavy hearts because of the cross. We watch these two followers, hearts just, mm, because of the cross and that it's an empty cross. Jesus, risen. Oh, the wonder of their hearts. So I want to talk about that this morning. Under this idea, kind of the weight of burden at the cross, there, there's a part that it, it, it is a weight of bur burden. Uh, for, for instance, this, this idea, there is no substance heavier uh, in this world anywhere than the cross. There is a weight of burden on the cross of Jesus. Sometimes you feel it in ways that makes you real, real uncomfortable. It makes us question, all of us question, even myself as a pastor, question, do I want to follow this Jesus at times because of the weight and the heaviness of this cross? There's a weight of burden to the cross. Sometimes it just seems, man, it's just too heavy. It's too hard. It, would, it just seems that somehow there's got to be an easier way. But over and over again, there's not. The world is going to lie to us. The world will promise us an easier way. But it always ends up worse than if we just let that cross, as heavy as it is, imprint upon us. Because sometimes it is too heavy and it is too hard. But yet, it's our only hope. The Apostle Paul uh, refers to this in Romans chapter 12, verse 1. He says this, And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you let them be a living and holy sacrifice that's a hard word always you are to be a sacrifice you're following Jesus you're to be a sacrifice as Jesus was a sacrifice the kind that he will find acceptable this is the true the, the true is this is truly the way to worship him Again, as I've heard, uh, read in commentators and, and heard from other pastors when they teach this deal, that we are a living body. We're to be this living sacrifice. Then that weight of the cross is to come upon us and we don't know if whether it's, it's going to be so heavy that it's going to kind of crush us and kill us. And so as a living sacrifice, sometimes we want to get off of that from underneath the weight of the cross and think that somehow we can find another way. But yet we're following a Jesus, as we said on Palm Sunday. Jesus goes to the cross with both grit and grace. It's not just about grace, 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 I love grace. But grace is not soft. There's a grit to the grace of Jesus. There's a grit to the Savior that we follow. We know that he goes to the cross with that grit and grace. Well, there's nothing else in this world like it. We were talking about this idea as we were kind of going through Monday, Thursday and stuff that in, in the Old Testament, when the first Passover happened, as the Israelites had been in, in Egypt for over 400 years, they've grown to this kind of mighty uh, number of people in that, and they're going to be delivered, that God speaks to Moses and tells the it tells Moses what to say to the people. And the people are to listen to what Moses tells them from God. Then they are to follow the instructions God gives as they listen. And if they listen and follow, they'll live. And if they listen and follow and they live, they'll end up believing that God is for them. So Moses tells them, take a lamb, sacrifice it, take some of the blood, and mark the doorposts of your home. And when the angel of death comes, he'll pass over. The Israelites that listened and followed, they lived. 
And they ended up believing. On Monday, Thursday, Jesus says, listen to me. This is now my broken body. This is now my blood. Take it and eat it and drink it. Listen, follow, live, believe. And they do. Even though what happens next, just can't take it all in. We know that the weight of sin that Jesus deals with on the cross, well, it is crushing. There's just no other way to really describe it. The sin that we have in our lives is a part of what crushed Jesus. But yet, as Jesus took our sins, as it crushed him on the cross, as it held him on the cross, it wasn't the nails. It was our sin and all the sin of the people that have ever lived, all the sin of the people that will ever live. The weight of this sin comes fully crushing onto Jesus. Well, none of that should be surprising. The first gospel promise in the Bible is from Genesis 3.15. Adam and Eve, they decided they're not going to quite trust God in that. They listen to the lying promises of the evil one and they end up dying because of those lying promises. But God comes in his mercy and his grace already knowing. So in Genesis 3.15, we read these words. God speaking these words and we listen to them and we follow, we live and believe. I will put enmity between you and the woman. He's talking about you, that, that evil one, that, that serpent and that, and the woman, all the people that will come from this woman between your offspring, the ones, the people that do your evil deeds in it, and hers. And he, referring to Jesus, will crush your head. Crushes Satan's head. Even as Satan strikes his heel as he's on that cross. So we see Jesus, he crushes sin, he crushes death. The weight of that cross is still so heavy on us. So this morning, what I want us to do is that those of us who want to be cross my heart followers of Jesus, never forget Good Friday. Those two disciples, as they're walking back to Emmaus that day, they are still living the horrors of Good Friday. They'll never forget. Again, they, when they, Jesus first comes upon them, he, they talk about, oh, we had so much hope. And then the cross happened. Good Friday happened. So they, they'll remember that. But yet also we know that these disciples, even as they are so heavy and they're, 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 they're suffering, and there's that part of, even today, even today, some of us, you know, if you're here for Good Friday, if you've ever been here for a Good Friday, I hate Good Fridays. We make them as dark as we can. This year, some of you, if you came to Good Friday, had a little slip of paper and confessed some sins. You came up and you knelt by a cross. And you took a nail and a hammer and you nailed your sins. We heard all this hammer sounds of people nailing their sins into the cross of Jesus. There's a part of me that, no, no. But yet there's another part of me that oh, there is no other way. No other way. To cross my heart, followers of Jesus, never forget Good Friday, even when we don't like it, because we need it. And of course, cross my heart, followers of Jesus, <laughs> well, we never forget, we, we always remember Resurrection Day too. Cross my heart, followers of Jesus, remember Resurrection Day. Again, those two disciples, those two followers of Jesus walking to Emmaus, they'll never forget the, those moments. Even when the cross becomes very, very heavy in their lives in the future days, weeks, months, and years, they're never forget, going to forget that first Resurrection Day. All the other disciples, they're never going to forget that Resurrection Day either. 
Again, just as the, the, the weight of a burden of the cross comes down on us so hard on Good Friday, the wonder of what the cross does for us, this lift of hope, this lift that we were singing about earlier in that first song, just the lift of hope that this Jesus, this Jesus, he's risen, he's risen, he's alive, he's alive. And so we read here in the Luke 24 after this, and after they rose that same hour and returned to Jerusalem, again, I talked, talked to last week, it didn't take them two hours to get back to Jerusalem. They walked and ran as fast as they could to get back to Jerusalem. And it says that these two found the 11, and here's these 11, and, and those who were gathered with them together saying, and, and, they, and these are the 11, and all those gathered with them, they're saying, hey, the Lord's risen, the Lord's risen. He's appeared to Simon. And these other two, they, they told what had happened on the road and how he was known to them in the break of the bread and they're just this celebration this celebration going on and then Luke goes on and says here's what happened next it says as they were talking about these things Jesus himself stood among them and said to them peace to you peace to you but again they were startled and frightened and thought they saw a spirit and Jesus said to them why are you troubled and why do doubts arise in your hearts but again he knows I just, it's hard to take this in he says, see my hands and my feet, it's I myself. He says, touch me and see. Ah, oh, the wonder of this Jesus coming so close, so, so present. A spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and feet. And while they were still disbelieved for joy and were marveling, still disbelieved and joy and marveling. I mean, they're stunned. They're shocked. They don't know what to make of this. But yet they're so happy. They're, they're marveling. They're, 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 they just can't take it all in. And he said to them, have you anything here to eat? Love this. Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish and he took it and he ate it before them. Just, oh. Yes, who is this Jesus? Who is this Jesus? It's right here with us. So, and then Luke goes on, and I want us to think about as Luke goes on, there's this, these words are for our heart. There, there's, there's heart, our hearts, his word, his presence in the word. It just gives us left. Just give us left. And then Jesus said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Those two disciples that were on the road, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We just had two hours with them where he opened up the scriptures to us. And then it says, then he opened their minds, all the people gathered in that room, the 11 and the others that were gathered, plus these two, they're getting their minds open again. He opened their minds to understand the scriptures and he said to them, thus it is written that the Christ should suffer and on the third day rise from the dead and that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be proclaimed in his name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem and they would do that. Or the next number of days and weeks and months as we read in the book of Acts, they would do that and they'll... It keeps going over and over and over and over and here we are in 2017 on this Sunday after Easter. You are all witnesses of these things. The word of God on our hearts. Presence of Jesus in this word and how it still gives us us left. So again, over and over again, we talk about here having uh, chair time, 15 minutes of chair time. And the reason that we want you to have chair time is because there's a lift that comes from the chair time. Because in chair time, you're there with your heart, the word, the presence of Jesus in the word, and there's lift. Again, sometimes when you're in those ch chair time for 15 minutes, there's going to be a wonderful lift. Maybe you'll see something that you've, even though you've read that piece of, uh, of the Bible, that scripture, hundreds of times, and, that, and all of a sudden, I mean, like I was, that for many of us, and some of the conversations I've had this last week, and that, never thought about, I heard this story about Jesus walking seven miles to Emmaus, but I never thought of it being Sunday afternoon and taking two hours. It was just a new insight. And so sometimes there's going to be that, and sometimes it'll just be a little lift. But if we're not in the chair, spending some time in the Word, opening our hearts to it. Well, can there be a lift? But when we're in that chair, time and time again, Jesus will meet us there more times than not. That's who Jesus is. He likes to meet us and be with us. And then Luke finishes up his gospel in Luke chapter 24 and as he's gonna kind of sets up uh, going 
into the book of Acts. It says, And behold, I am sending the promise of my Father upon you. But stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. And then he led them out as far as Bethany. And this is 40 days later. Luke is just kind of going to jump from this first night to 40 days later. He, they led him out to as far as Bethany. And lifting up his hands, lifting up, he blessed them. And while he blessed them, he parted from them and was carried up into the heavens. And they worshipped him and returned with Jerusalem with great joy. And they had 40 days to process this. The wonder of the lift of the cross. And they were continually in the temple blessing God. The wonder. Over the next number of weeks, months, and years, there will be times where the cross is going to be so heavy on those disciples and on some of the earlier followers of the disciples. They will watch some people, even though they at one time were exposed to the cross and the heaviness of the cross, they will squirm out from underneath it. It's just too heavy. But they will not. They'll also see at times the wonders of the cross just lifting people free, lifting people with hope they thought was never even possible. And all the disciples, with grit and with grace, they will die deaths because of the cross that we read about but won't happen to us. We follow this Jesus. Cross my heart and remember Good Friday. Cross my heart and remember Resurrection Day. Hey, I've got a, an assignment for you. You might want to write this down or you can take a picture if you've got your smartphone and that. It's going to come up on the screen. There's a song that I've been listening to dozens and dozens of times. You can watch it on YouTube. You can watch it with the lyrics and that. It's called Closer Than You Know. Closer Than You Know. A group called Hillsong United. So I watched it yesterday on YouTube once again. And the words that, the words bring us through Monday, Thursday, Good Friday. And the wonder that Jesus is always closer than you know closer than you know. If you watch this, cross my heart, Good Friday. Cross my heart, Resurrection Day. Let's stand, let's pray. We'll sing one more song and away we go. So Jesus, on my heart, imprint your image. Blessed Jesus, King of grace, that life's cares, riches, and pleasures never may your work erase. Let the clear inscription be Jesus, 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 crucified for me is my life, my hope's foundation, and my glory and salvation. May that be on this second Sunday after Easter, this first Sunday after Easter, excuse me. May it be tomorrow, and on Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday and Saturday and Sunday and on and on and on. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Cross my heart. Hear my prayer, Jesus. Hear our prayers. Cross my heart. Jesus says, you cross our hearts. Well, there is no other Savior. There is no other God. And so we sing to you, my Savior, my God. In your name, Jesus. And all agreed and said, amen.